What's happening, everybody, and welcome back to the Funky Brain Podcast. My name is Dennis, and we are hanging out today. Hope everybody's faring well. And today's guest is an international motivational keynote speaker, a business futurist, usually speaking on technology and leadership, but on a variety of topics, including positive thinking, law of attraction, which we'll talk about in a little bit here. But he's the founder of Trend Mastery, Inc., which is a strategic consulting agency, and I'll let him tell you more about that in a little bit, and the host of the Strategic Business Insights video blog, Mr. Patrick Schwartfeger. How are you today, sir? I'm doing good, Dennis. It's nice to be with you today. Thank you. Well, and also one thing I didn't throw in your uh, spectacular intro that I threw at you there was you you also have a new book. And what is the name of that book that's coming out here? Yeah, the new one. Uh, boy, I've been working on that. Uh, it's called Pandemic Inc. Eight Forces Driving uh, Business Failure and Fortune in the Post-COVID-19 Economy. So my last book, uh, which is on Amazon, is, is so I have five books so far. This one's my sixth. The last one's called Anarchy, Inc., uh, Profiting in a Decentralized World with Artificial Intelligence and Blockchain. So that's all about tech. Uh, and really, this one is, too. They're very similar books. And so I, I picked a similar naming convention, uh, Pandemic, Inc., versus Anarchy, Inc. So... With any luck, uh, the, the new one will be on Amazon next week, but we're, we're just waiting for some last minute things. But uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting time for me. It's been busy, but it's been exciting. Yeah, and I was watching one of your, your TEDx talks on learned intuition, how you talked about like intuitively knowing and feeling when something is going to occur. What inspired you to create that speech on learned intuition, that, that topic? Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's my own life experience. I mean, what you just said really resonates with me just because, you know, I, I have a propensity for the same thing for, for, you know, historically I'm 49 years old uh, at this point, but, you know, years ago, you know, the negativity and, and anger, you know, the competitive, like I wanted to prove those bastards wrong, right? It's kind of a common thing that a lot of us have, particularly if you had a kind of a nasty upbringing and I, I won't say I had a nasty upbringing, but it wasn't easy. So, you know, you get, there's a lot of residual stuff from, you know, things with your parents or even things from kids in school or whatever. You know, I wasn't a big kid, so I kind of got picked on a little bit. So anyway, you end up with this kind of negativity and this competitive, like you want to win, you want to beat them, you want to prove them wrong, and you want them to see that you beat them, right? That, and that's, that's another level. You know, you talk a lot about the law of attraction and, and positivity, and I've, I've kind of done the same thing as a, as a matter of necessity. You know, the law of attraction is, is not just magic. Now, I'm not saying there isn't some of that in there, okay? But, but the bottom line is there's a very natural, mathematical, scientific explanation for what's happening. And that's what my TED Talk was about, was because, you know, your subconscious mind in any given settings you'll make 10 million observations. You got five senses, you'll make 10 million observations, but your conscious mind, right? Your prefrontal cortex can only keep track of about 40 at a time, 40 out of 10 million. It's 99.9996% But observations you've made, you're actually consciously aware of. So when you, the law of attraction and positivity and gratitude journals and all this kind of stuff, what you're doing is you're focusing your subconscious mind. And once that focus is there, then all of a sudden in your prefrontal cortex, you'll notice things that are congruent with that view, right? And it, like if you wake up in the, in, in the morning and you, you, for whatever, you got off the wrong side of the bed, you decide it's going to be a bad day. It will be because you're thinking it. But meanwhile, if you, if you get up and if you can figure out a way to be positive about something, and there's a million ways you can do it. Everyone can pick their own way. But if you can figure out a way to do that, you're going to go through the world and notice positive things. So, you know, one of the things that, that, I, that I live my life by some of these axioms, one of them is that the world is a reflection of yourself. It truly is. You will see if you're, if you're angry, you will be living in an angry world. And if you're mean, you're going to live in, you're living in a mean, I, I can't imagine living, well, I can, because I did it years ago, I did it. And the world was, was mad and angry. 
But now, you know, I'm, I'm not saying I'm positive all the time, but I, I've made some progress. But, but I notice a distinct difference, and I, it's all a function of my psychology. Awesome. Really well put. I mean, I say all the time, you know, the average person along the lines of what you were just talking about has 60 to 80,000 thoughts per day. There's yeah. 84,000 seconds in a day. That's almost one thought per second. If you, yeah. And if those thoughts were all positive, that would be awesome. The downside with that is that, you know, 90, 95% of the thoughts you had today are exactly the same as the thoughts you had yesterday and the day before and last week and last month. We have the same thoughts over and over. Like we, we all have a story. Like I have a story. I'm sure you have a story, like whether it's victimhood or whatever. I mean, there's a million different things, stories you can have, but we all end up with, with some, you know, again, I have a bias towards science just because my, my, my whole family is in the sciences. Uh, and and this, this boils down to neural pathways and, and something called myelin, which is essentially a, a form of of insulation that grows around neural pathways that you use frequently. So, and what happens is you have this, you have this, you know, the story, whatever the story is, and you've told yourself that story tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of times in all kinds of different situations. It's always the same explanation. And so that neural pathway is really, really strong. And so you have a, a real, it's difficult to not use that same story in the future. That's why you know, the, the science of habits, where they say that habits, it takes 21 days to form a new habit. Why is, what, what's with the 21 days? Well, it turns out that if you have it, like, let's say you write a gratitude journal, write in a gratitude journal every day for, for three weeks. That's enough time for that new neural pathway in your mind to grow some myelin around it too. Now, it can't compete with the one you've had for 30 years, but it's a start. Right? And so once you've got that myelin, now it's a little bit easier to use that neural pathway instead of the one you've used. And if you keep doing it, keep doing it. That's why the, the power of meditation, right? If you meditate, I've meditated every day for five years and I've kind of fallen out of that routine, sadly. Uh, but but I, I think the benefit is really still there because it taught me two things. Number one, it taught me to not engage with the negative thoughts and, and the second is to, uh, to more consciously think of positive things. And so I, there's myelin that's grown around that. So I, I, there's actually physiological differences. Like when you, when you learn to do the things that you talk about every day, and whether it's you know, addiction recovery, I mean, my gosh, every day that you stay clear of that past addiction, you're growing myelin around that neural pathway that, that was formed when you were in the addiction, right? And depending on how long you were in it, that determines how much myelin, we're talking just, I'm just talking about the science, just the physiology, right? If you were in that addiction for, for 20 years, that neural pathway is going to be a lot more insulated with myelin than if you were addicted for five years, right? And so you can kind of do the math on this stuff. Like I smoked for 20 years. I quit in 2006. And now it's been, you know, 14 years since I've smoked. I've kind of gotten, it's gone. I don't, I don't crave it. It's gone. Thank God. And I'm not saying that's a big addiction, like compared to other people, I'm not crying the blues, but, but I really noticed like, you know, for me, in order for something to work in my life, I need victories on the ground, right? I need, I need to see some, even if it's a small victory, I need to see tangible proof that I've made a little bit of progress. And, and, and that's what happens is the, the myelin story and, and all these other little things that I try to do, these little games I play with myself, like even with the meditation, I'm looking for victories to, to, to validate my belief and that perpetuates the, the pattern and the habit in, in a positive direction. At least that's what I hope for. Yeah, that's great stuff. And one of the things we always say is uh, it's 100 miles into the woods, it's 100 miles back out. And, you know, hopefully it goes a little quicker on the way out. But, you yeah, know, yeah. you have to make those changes. I have a great life, as I know you do as well. And I don't want for anything I'm provided for. I have a nice car, I live in a decent house. And the first thing I do every day when I open my eyes is think of the few things that are less than perfect. And I dwell on those things. So I need yeah, to yeah. reprogram my mind every day. So this is really awesome stuff. So once again, real quick, we're talking with Patrick Schwertfeger. And Patrick, if people want to get in touch with you, how would they reach out to you? My website address is my full name, which is kind of a disaster because my last name is, <laughs> is really long. So it's patrickschwertfeger.com. But, but an easier way to get there is just go to bookpatrick.com bookpatrick.com and that should forward although I, I have a, a weird hiccup with that just recently so I think it's fixed but I'm not sure but either way my full name.com if you have again I mean I 
I'm not really selling anything aside from books. Uh, you know, I, I do corporate keynote. That's how I've earned my living. Uh, but if anyone's interested in what I do or, or I have a question, they're, they're certainly welcome uh, to go there. You can go to the contact page and, and those, those messages come right into my, my own inbox. So uh, I'd be happy to hear from anybody who might be interested. Awesome. And I'll have those links on here as well. So another one of the, my favorite uh, things that I found when I was looking through your stuff, and you have this awesome quote, and I talk about this all the time as well. And it's the road to being is through doing. Yeah. I, I say that all the time. It's like people, when you ask people, what is your goal? It's almost always one of two. There's two answers. Money. Yeah. I want money and I want to be happy. Those are almost always the two answers. So yeah. Let's take money out. We all want more money. So I want happy. I want to be happy, right? But there is no like Mount Happy, right? And you were talking about this in your speech and I like the way you put it is that, I mean, you, you have to do happy. So go describe that to us. I, I really loved it. Yeah, I appreciate you you look, you look watching that, uh, Dennis. Thank you. You know, but, I mean, a lot of this, I've kind of learned from, from people along the way, but I have a, a friend of mine. She's an older, like 68-year-old Jewish lady. Her name's Phyllis. Um, she's one of my best friends. I, I love her to death. Anyway, she is happy when she's swimming in a pool or taking a walk out in the forest somewhere. That's what makes her happy. And, and it's such a simple formula. Do that more. I mean, do the things that make, we all have things that make us happy. Like do those things, do more of them. I mean, so, you know, the law of attraction, another thing that it talks about a lot is that you, you can't just think about what you want and expect it to, to show up on your doorstep you have to take a step towards your goal. Even if it's an incredibly small step, you have to take, you have to take a little bit of action, right? And, and, and something that I, I wrote about uh, quite a bit in my, my new book uh, coming out is that you almost never see step two until you're finished step one. This is something that, that you know, I think business plans, for example, are a complete waste of time uh, because you're planning out step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but you, the only one that's reliable is step one. And once you take step one, you're going to learn something from having done that. And step two will reveal itself to you once you've completed step one. And, and that's in a position, you're going to have a perspective at the end of step one that you can't have before you've taken step one. Like the, the perspective you have today is going to be different than if you take some step, regardless of how small it is. You take some step in the direction of your goals, and all of a sudden you have a new perspective that you didn't have, you didn't have access to before. And so then, you, then all of a sudden step two reveals itself to you. And so or, you know, or maybe even three different things you could do that you've learned as a result of step one. So you do those things. At the end of doing those things, now step three becomes obvious, but you never would have thought of doing that at the beginning. So life is fluid. We live in a linear existence, right? Tomorrow doesn't happen until today is finished. And people who, who kind of, you know, they try to make a master plan. Number one, I mean, a master plan can be inspiring. I get that. But it's also big. It's also intimidating. There's a lot, lot of stuff that has to happen. And I, I am not a fan, generally speaking, of master plans. I'm, I'm a fan of doing what's right in front of you, taking that step, right? And the, so the road to doing, go the, the road to being is through doing. Like if you want to be successful, you need to do successful. You need to figure out what successful people are doing and do those things. Like the example that I, I think I used in, in the video you watched, I don't remember. I wanted to go to Dubai. I, I speak a lot internationally. I, I've traveled quite a bit. And I had a goal that I really wanted to speak in Dubai. So I sent some packages out to event planners in the area and so on. And eventually a couple of them engaged and I, I was replying and I was, I worked, I mean, I was, this one started to become like the most likely candidate. And I mean, I worked like crazy to get that gig. And finally I got the gig. And as soon as I finished doing it, I became the guy who spoke in Dubai. Because I did it, I became it. They're the same. Like th there is no other way to become. The only way to become is to do. And th the biggest problem that most of us have with that is that we feel like we have to ask somebody's permission to do it. We, we need someone or something or some organization or some institution or some academic you know, school or university to say, okay, you have permission to do this thing. No, you don't need it. <laughs> you know, screw that, man. Just do it. 
right? Just especially today in the online digital social media era, like look what you did, Dennis. You started a podcast and now you're it, right? You've got the podcast. You're in a leadership capacity and there's people who follow you. There's people who watch you. This is one of the things I learned when I was like 22, 23 years old. People watch you. Not everybody. And you don't always know who watches you. But people watch you. They watch what you do. They, they notice what you do. Again, not all. I'm not trying to be egocentric about it. But you know, out of all the people in your circle, all the people who know you, some people are watching you, right? And, and that, that's another interesting thing. Like the only thing you have to do to be a leader is lead. Go do something, right? Go do something. It, you know, present what you believe in, declare what you believe in publicly. That's immediately taking a leadership role. So you want to be a leader, do leadership. So the same thing is true for happiness. The same thing, health. You want to be healthy, you need to do healthy. Do things that are healthy, then you're going to become healthy. The, all these things go hand in hand. And it's always a question of taking that next little step in the direction of your goals. Yeah, really well put, very powerful, I love it. I always say, you know, you have to take action to get the results that you're looking for, right? So it's like, and a lot of them are very simple formulas, but I think people don't wanna do the work. So it's like, all right, if you're doing something, I mean, let's keep it simple here, all right, Patrick? If you're doing something, if your goal is to be happy and you're doing something and it makes you unhappy, then stop doing that. Right. And then yeah, find yeah. what you just said, which I really love. You were like, you know, if you, if you see successful people and you want to be like them, do what they're doing. Right. There's some simple formulas to do. And now there's Google. If you don't know how to do it, Google it. You know, you there's ways to find out how to get to where you want to be and you have to do it. So I love that. Really well put. Um, I know you've had some trials and failures as we all have that we've had to overcome. So can you share with us some of your failures that you've had to overcome to get to where you are so people can see that you can do it, that we all can do it? I mean, I, I went self-employed in 2002 and uh, started speaking full-time in 2007. It was, it was such a disaster. It's, it's almost hard to believe. Like now I, I think back and it's, it's hard to believe that it, it was the way it was. And again, I'm not saying I found the end of the rainbow. I mean, I have, I, you're right. I have a, a nice life. I'm super grateful. I mean, just beyond grateful. But during those years, I mean, it was a crooked path. I, I didn't, you know, this, the secret to success isn't timing. It's time. Doing something for long enough is what leads to success. And I, I did, a, I had a bunch of fits and starts where I started one thing and I hated it or Maybe I liked it, but I couldn't make any. That was the thing. I either loved it, but I couldn't make any money at it. Or I did make money at it, but I hated it. And so I had, I had a few of those different things before I started to uh, find my way. And by the way, you talk about using Google to figure out what to do. You know, July 19th, 2006, that, that's when someone on the news, on the TV, talked about podcasting for the first time. I don't know if you know this, but that's how I got my start was as a podcast. Uh, and that day, uh, January 19th, it was in the, the morning. And I was watching the morning news and they were interviewing someone who was talking about the Iraq war uh, at the time. And he was a podcaster. I thought, what's, what's that? So I Googled it. And it told me exactly, I found a, a, a blog post, which told me exactly what to buy. And I went to Best Buy that day and bought a microphone and got the equipment. And I, I, I recorded my first podcast episode that same day. And I had it up on iTunes before I went to bed that night. Uh, so yeah, you can absolutely find how to do things very, very quickly. But, but anyway, even that, that podcast did quite well. It ended up being like the third most popular finance related podcast on iTunes uh, way, way back in the day. But that didn't translate into any money for me. Like I didn't, I, and I was living on nothing. And, and so I actually, my, my, uh, my fourth book was called Keynote Mastery. And it was, uh, it's all about my journey as a, as a professional speaker. And people, you know, the book's done, you know, reasonably well. It's got maybe a hundred or so reviews on Amazon. And I read those reviews all the time. And, and the feedback is always the same thing, or at least most of the time it's the same. And it's, I can't believe how long it took. Because the book is, it's a book of failures. It's not a book of successes. I mean, it, it's just, I mean, it's not gloating at all. It's almost like exposing like all the insane chaos and failure and weakness and struggle of, of like a, you know, six year period, basically more than that, even seven year period before things finally started to stabilize for me, uh, 2007 to 2014, 2014 was when I finally 
paid off all my debts and I was in, in the black and, and, and I was having, I was, things were, were good. So it took a long time. And, and, and that's, you know, put it this way, Dennis, if someone would have told me at the beginning that it would, have, you know, self-employment would have taken basically 12 years for me to really get out the other side, I never would have done it. I feel bad about saying this on your, on your, on your show, because I know some people will hear that and be like, Oh, I, I don't want to deal with 12 years. I'm just going to give up. And I don't want, I don't want that for anybody because the bottom line is you're right. The only way you fail is if you give up the motto, which is, is maybe a little bit sad, but true is that anything that's worth having in life takes longer and costs more than you originally expect. Like you want to renovate your house, it's going to take longer than you think. You want you want to learn how to speak, you know, Japanese. It's you know, I mean, some people like Tim Ferriss can pull that off pretty quick, but for most of us, it's going to take a little bit longer than you think. But it's worth doing. That's that is your life. It's your purpose of your life. And the feeling on the other side, I get so many people who because maybe they've read my story, you know, that in that book, or they've seen some other things, and and they're inspired by again people watch you and. If you want to be a leader, even to your kids, do you have kids, right? You're a leader to them. Like we're, we're all leaders in some areas and followers in others. Like if you go to church, you're a follower in that capacity, right? If you have a family and, and you know, children, now you're a leader in that capacity. If, you, if, you, if you're in a company and you're a manager, well, you're a leader to the people below you. You're a follower to the people above you. So we always have both of these in our lives. I have areas where I, where I play a leadership role and I have lots of areas in my life where I, where I play a, a follower role. But the bottom line is cater to your leadership role. Because again, the road to being is through doing. So if you want to be a more of a leader in your life, then focus on your leadership and know that people watch you and people want to be inspired by you. The best thing you can do for somebody else is achieve in your own life. There's a story in the Bible about that. I forget that, you know, the two sons, they get the same amount. One buries it in, in, the, in the ground and the other one builds an empire with it or maybe loses it even, but at least he tried to do something with it. That, that's what life is, is trying. Go out and try. Be a try hard, right? Like the road to being is through doing. Go out and try. And people will come up to you. People come up to me all the time and they're like, I love that you tried this or that, or I'm inspired by what you did here or there it perpetuates what you're trying to do, right? I'm sure you get that all the time yourself. And I, I think that's, to me, that's what life is all about. Yeah, really well put, very powerful stuff. I'm super excited to have you here and saying these things. And, you know, I, you only fail when you stop trying. And yeah. uh, Wayne Dyer, he, he had this great example of, um, it was, if I throw you a football and you drop the football, are you a football failure? No, you're like, all right, so throw me the football. And eventually you catch the football and now you're a success. Yeah. All you do is produce results. You don't fail at anything. What do you do with the results that you're producing? Do you use yeah. them to figure out how to do it? If you were like a real estate agent and you lose that deal, are you a real estate failure? No, you're going to go out and sell it. You'll eventually sell a house. Now you're a success. So you produce yeah. results. What do you do with the results that you produce? So love it, powerful stuff. And so in closing, last question I have for you, how does Patrick Schwerdfeger want to be remembered? I guess what, what, I, what I've always wanted, you know, you're only on this planet for, you know, whatever, 70 Minutes. years. <laughs> yeah, it goes by quick, man. And, and I, to me, I, I view the whole thing as a game. Like, it's just a huge game. And, and just like for, I, I don't mean to get off topic, but it, you, know, you think about politics and a lot of people get really angry and, about politics. But, but, but that's whatever like you know listen human metrics have gotten better every single year all around the world we've reduced poverty by 50 percent in the last 20 years so as far as i'm concerned the republicans have done a great job the democrats have done a great job the libertarians have done a great job the globalists have done a great job we're doing great things are going fine and i'm not going to waste my time being frustrated at politics which is largely outside of my control aside from my vote okay so why would I get frustrated about something that's outside of my control when I can be excited about things that are in my control? What can I do today, tomorrow, the next day? Right. And that, that's, that, that's kind of a selfish perspective. Like it's very egocentric in a way, but I'll tell you something. And this is what I come back to the people who have expressed appreciation for me one way or another in my life, their appreciation always stems from the fact that I'm out there doing things 
when other people are not. So I, I believe that the, the, the best thing you can do in life is just live your life to the fullest, right? So how do I want to be remembered? Well, I want people to be like, that guy, he made something out of nothing. He, he went out there and did stuff. He did things that, you know, think bigger. I mean, that's my, that's my message as a speaker is to think bigger about your life. And, and the funny thing about thinking big is when you do really big things, you don't have any competition. There's no one, no one else is doing it. So you're all on your own. And, and, and meanwhile, everyone who's watching is like, Oh my God, I can't believe they, he just went out and did that. So, you know, when I die at my funeral, I mean, number one, although I'm wearing a black shirt today, the rule is going to be no black. You're not allowed to wear black in my funeral. That, that's the first thing in my will. Don't wear black in my funeral. And, and secondly, I really hope that whoever's going to be there, whoever says a few words or whatever, I hope they say that guy took advantage of his life and lived it to the fullest. And I, I hope that for everybody I meet, and I say it all the time, is go out, just do anything. I don't even care what it is. Just go out and do because that, that's, that's where it all starts. One of the reasons people love celebrities, entertainers, musicians, actors, whatever it is, is because they had the guts to go after what it was that they believed in. You know, yeah. there's some talent there. There's some genetics there sometimes, whatever it is. But they, they worked hard to get there. They don't see that part. They, and most people did. Most people went there. Some people were born into it. They get lucky or whatever. I'm not talking about them. But most people... When you look at a celebrity, there's like this, you're like, wow, look at them. Like almost like I want to be them. But you know what it is about them? They had the balls and the courage to go after what it was that they believed in and do it at a high level. And yeah. that's why even if it's subconscious, you're looking at, you're like, wow, like I want to be like that because they had the balls to go after it. One of the things I do all the time, you know, I, I follow, I, I'm a subscribed to like 140, 150 different YouTube channels. So I, I, I got a lot of my, a lot of my research I do on YouTube. And one of the things I love doing the most is going to the, the YouTube channels of these guys and gals, you know, people that I follow and I sort their videos oldest to newest. And I look at some of their first videos and they're awkward and they're not comfortable. It's, it's weird. And I love it because, because now they're all, you know, they're the best example of this is uh, Troy Aikman. who used to be the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys back in the nineties. And, and he's like a great example of media training because in the early days, he was really awkward in front of the camera. I didn't know how to answer questions properly. You know, the whole key is to answer, answer the question in 15 seconds or less and shut up, right? In the media <laughs> environment, answer the question quick and, and let them get on to the next question, which I'm not doing, by the way. But he had media <laughs> training and now he's really, really good. And, and, and I, I see this with YouTube uh, people and, and different influencers or whatever that I follow. And it, YouTube. Probably me. Do, Oh, I'm, I was horrible, man. And, and so you kind of get used to it, right? And you learn that you're being, you know, you, you're becoming by doing. And, and, you know, all the celebrities are doing the same thing. They didn't all start out that way. That's for sure. Yeah, awesome stuff, man. Well, once again, we're talking with Patrick Schwertfeger. And thank you so much, dude. It's been a pleasure talking with you. You're well-spoken and speaking genuinely, authentically from the heart. And I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate being on your show, Dennis. Right on, man. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you soon. Have a great day. Hey, Dennis here. Have you ever looked in the mirror and thought, I need to quit? Or maybe you've tried dozens or even hundreds of times on your own, but you can't do it. If you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, call me now for a free 20 minute consultation. We'll just talk for a little bit and we'll see if you don't feel better. And while we're all dealing with the COVID pandemic, I'm offering two free full 40 minute coaching sessions. We'll get you set up with the tools you need to become successful in recovery and sobriety. I know from experience having been sober since April 8th of 2003, that it is not easy, but you don't have to do it by yourself. I'm here to help. We'll do it together. If I can get clean and sober, anybody can. So call me right now, not tomorrow when you're sick and hungover again, right now, I'm here to help. Have a great day.